Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, October 12th, 2020. And today we're going to be talking about how the Democratic Party took a very unfavorable Senate map and turned it into something that they are now the favorites to win. I'm using the Cook Political Report and their ratings from November 30th, 2018, two years ago, right after the Democratic Party lost a net two Senate seats in the midterm elections. Overall, I mean, the Democratic Party was probably very disappointed with that result. However, looking at the 2018 map, they realistically should not have been expecting too many pickups, if any at all. But for the 2020 election, let's take a look at this map. Well, I think that this map, honestly, um, was a little bit more favorable than 2018. I mean, a lot less Democratic incumbents that are running in uh, competitive states, but a lot more uh, Republican territory that they're going to be working with. Now, in terms of the states that Trump won in 2016, if we apply that to this map, essentially, the Republican Party would be right back where they were just two years ago. They'd be all the way at 53 seats. Now, that is not a good look for uh, the Democratic Party, or at least it wasn't back in 2018. They were really hoping to win back the Senate in this election. And for a very sh long period of time, probably throughout 2019, they thought it was impossible. Because the Democrats had not really made inroads in Montana, they didn't have an incumbent who was running for re-election. Michigan was a Trump state from 2016 that very well could have gone to uh, a Republican this election year, which we're actually seeing a pretty competitive race, but it'd probably be a little bit more lopsided in favor of the GOP if Hillary Clinton was running today. But still, Michigan could, uh, if you know this was a very good year for President Trump, it could po be possible that Michigan goes red. I mean, the fact that there's also incumbents in Maine and Colorado didn't really help these numbers either. So the Democratic Party definitely was panicking, to say the least. But now we're going to re-characterize uh, this map based off the November 30th rankings. And we're going to talk about what that map looked like and why uh, it was so bad for the Democratic Party. So as you can see, they have all their ratings from 2012. Uh, and we can go all the way up to 2020. So we're going to start off with the first rating, November 30th, 2018. Well, the Democrats start off with 12, um, we'll have 12 incumbent seats. The Republicans have 23. These are the ratings. As you can see in this gray toss-up column, there are none. Not a single toss-up race. Arizona was lean Republican. Colorado was lean Republican. So what? let's get started with these characterizations. Essentially, some of these ratings actually have changed away in favor of the Democrats. Not some of them, just Michigan. Um, but pretty much all of these states were considered to be toss-ups. Um, sorry, we're all considered to be safe. And we had no real toss-ups to take a look at. Minnesota was the only likely state, and then the lean state was Alabama. Now, that was actually pretty surprising that they didn't consider it to be toss-up right away. But I believe that's it in terms of all of the Democratic states. Um, I should be missing, there we go, 47 seats, one lean state for the Democrats, and one likely state. The rest were safe. For the GOP, they had roughly the same type of composition. A lot of safe Republican states, um, lean states in Arizona, Colorado, and Maine, the likely states were Georgia, Kentucky, uh, Mississippi, Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, and uh, the state of North Carolina, which I think is fascinating that it was likely. Then the rest were safe. Now, at this point in time, um, South Carolina was not competitive. Alaska was not competitive. Texas was not competitive. Georgia did not have an open Senate seat. And even, you know, Iowa, Joni Ernst was rated as safe for the GOP. Now, they knew dang well that Iowa would eventually narrow up, and I'm surprised that they characterized it as safe. But at that time, it actually was looking very strong for the GOP. Um, looking at these numbers, 53 to 47, look at all the safe states. The only areas that the Democrats could have targeted were these lean Republican states. I mean, they are targeting them this time around, but there are plenty more, plenty more toss-up seats today. And we'll get to that in this new map. This is the November 2018 2020 electoral map, not 2020 electoral map, 2020 Senate map. As you can see, there is no inclination that Montana is competitive, that Iowa is competitive, Kansas is competitive, Texas, Alaska, um, South Carolina. There was no Georgia Senate special election. Those are seven races that have been, actually, I don't know why I made Mississippi um, a like, oh, actually, it was likely. I guess it's moved over into safe now. Um, that's weird. But looking at these races, I mean, Mississippi's likely. That's the only characterization that actually has moved in favor of the GOP. The rest of these have moved in favor of the Democrats, except for Michigan and Mississippi. Let's take a look at the ratings now. 2020 Senate ratings for September 23rd, 2020. And you can see in the toss-up column, none for the Democrats, but five for the GOP. 
let's get started on a new map with the safe states and then move over so for the safe states we pretty much have that is an electoral map that is not a senate map let's go ahead and pull up a senate map get rid of this put on the logo lock the map and then make it a donut because i like donuts um so these are the characterizations pretty much all of the democratic states as usual are considered to be safe um, minnesota i believe just moved over as you can see um let's go ahead and see actually where is minnesota tina smith her race has been moved over into the uh safe democratic column so that goes there uh, new hampshire is safe rhode island is safe virginia is safe new mexico is safe the only two states that are considered to be Democrat well, that have Democratic uh, incumbents right now that are competitive. Michigan is now lean from safe. That is a pretty drastic shift. And then Alabama is lean to lean Republican. I honestly don't see why it was considered to be lean for the Democrats from the beginning. But again, that's not my call to make. And that's it. For the Democratic held seats, they only lose one, which is not too good. But then you have to take a look at the Republican held seats. For the Republican safe seats, we have the states of Arkansas, Idaho, Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota, uh, Oklahoma. Louisiana, I believe, is considered to be uh, there as well. West Virginia, Tennessee, Louisiana. All of these states are considered to be solid Republican. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's go ahead and see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I believe I'm missing Mississippi because that just moved over into safe. Now for the likely states, we have Kentucky, we have Alaska, and we have Texas. Looking back two years ago, all of them were considered safe except for Kentucky. Now for the other lean states, I think that we should take a look at some of the more competitive parts of it. I mean, looking at the toss-up map, we have 10 seats that are considered to be toss-ups right now. 10. Now, we have yet to get into the lean Republican states, but to be fair, I mean, there's only three of them. That still leaves seven toss-up races, and that doesn't even include the races that I've characterized for the Democrats already, So uh, that I'm about to characterize for the Democrats based off the Cook rating. So looking at lean Republican for Georgia, looking at lean Republican for South Carolina, and looking at lean Republican for, I believe that's Kansas, um, that's not a good look whatsoever. And for the lean Democratic states, we have Arizona and we have Colorado. So that's how the map ends up. Five toss-up races with Republican incumbents. Now, um, so I accidentally characterized Georgia regular election instead of Georgia special election. Characterized David Perdue's race as a toss-up. Now, this is the map. This is the map today. 47 Republican seats, 48 Democratic seats. Flashback two years ago, 47 Democratic seats, 53 Republican seats. From 53 down to 47 in just two years is not good whatsoever. And looking at the, you can look at the map. You can see that it goes from very, very bright red to a lot of gray and a lot of light red. We have South Carolina, Kansas, Georgia Senate special election, Alaska, Texas, all areas that were considered to be safe or likely in 2018, safe or likely, that have now moved into either being toss-ups, lean, and, you know, for some of the safe states moving down one characterization, which means the Republican Party is spending money on a lot of these competitive races, where they used to have to focus on were actually Democratic states. Realistically, if this was a normal election year, which it's not, a normal election year does not entail that the Democrat candidate is up 11% nationwide. But besides that point, if this was a normal election year, New Hampshire should be competitive. May, uh, Michigan, in this initial map, should have been competitive. Virginia should be competitive. New Mexico should be competitive. Minnesota should be competitive. If I took those seats away from the Democrats based off states that should be competitive in a normal election year, that actually puts them down to 43. These were the prime, 42. These were the prime targets for the Republican Party, at least how they started off. They should have definitely fielded a good candidate in Minnesota because they definitely didn't. They didn't really in Virginia or New Mexico or New Hampshire. The only state where I think that the Republican candidate actually could possibly outrun President Trump is Michigan. But that's it. Out of those five races the GOP failed to field a strong candidate or failed to field anyone that was really backed by anyone too important. 47 races for the Democrats, 53 for the Republicans. Even if I flipped all of the lean Republican states on this map, it puts the Democrats at 50. And let's say the Republicans, you know, gained Alabama like they are poised to today. That actually puts them in the majority. 
The Democratic Party was not at a position to win the majority two years ago. They were not at the position to win the majority a year ago. We can take a look at the South Carolina characterization from the beginning of the year. For the, you know, oh, just refreshed on me, but for the solid Republican states, we see no, first of all, we see no lean Democratic states at the beginning of 2020, not even a year ago. South Carolina is considered safe. Texas is considered safe. Montana is considered safe. Alaska is considered safe. Doesn't really make sense because they're not safe now. North Carolina was considered to be lean R. Kansas has stayed the same. Georgia has stayed the same. But Purdue has gone from likely down to lean, down to toss-up, from safe to likely to lean to toss-up. Not a good look. Iowa from solid to likely to lean to toss-up. Not a good look. Arizona, which went from lean to toss-up to lean Democrat. Same thing with Colorado. And Maine. Looking at the you know initial characterization for Maine, that was probably one of the only competitive races from the beginning for the GOP because it is Maine and it was supposed to be competitive, but it was still lean Republican. That is not what we see today. So the Democrats took this unfavorable map and turned it into this. They made Montana toss up. They made Iowa close, North Carolina close. And today, today, the Republicans are now not the favorites to win the Senate, despite you know this map. If I had showed you this map two years ago, you would have said there's no way in hell that the Democratic Party is winning the majority. It just didn't seem feasible. They would have had to have a much better 2018 performance for us to be even discussing it. If I showed you the 2020 Senate map immediately after the 2018 midterms, I could have gotten the Democrats to 50 if they retained Alabama, which we all know is not clear today. But if we look at this map, nobody thought Montana would narrow up. I mean, I expected Steve Bullock to run. I didn't think that he was going to actually just say, you know what, I'm not going to run for Senate. But at that point in time, he was not a viable candidate. He said, I absolutely will not run. Joni Ernst was still a strong Republican incumbent. Texas was no longer in reach after Beto O'Rourke's loss in 2018, even in a Democratic year. South Carolina, could you imagine Lindsey Graham, someone who won his Senate race immediately in a year that Obama won 365 electoral votes? I mean, nobody could have expected South Carolina, except for maybe Jamie Harrison. But looking at this map today, while Mississippi and Michigan have moved away from the Democratic Party, all of the other states have shifted leftward. Take a look. I mean, literally just compare back and forth, back and forth, the red to gray, the red to gray, the red to gray to blue. And now the Democrats are currently leading in Iowa. They are currently leading in North Carolina. They are currently leading in Maine. That puts them at an outright majority, outright majority. They don't need a future vice president Kamala Harris. They've lost Alabama in this map. They still win the majority. And they're on track to possibly win a couple more. Because as we see <clears throat> in a couple of these battleground Senate races that the Democratic Party has raised money we have never seen before. Jamie Harrison raised $57 million in one quarter for the South Carolina Senate race. That is smaller than my home state of Maryland by population size. Do you know how easy it is to get into that TV market with that amount of money? Now, Jamie Harrison is by no means the favorite to win the race. But that's money that no Senate candidate in United States history has ever raised in a quarter. On top of that, South Carolina was safe Republican. I, I really just want to outline that the Republican Party we have seen over the past two years, if you've been watching my channel, the Republican Party went from saying we'll retain the House in 2018. That didn't happen. They went on to say we could expand our majority five, six seats in the Senate. That didn't happen. Yes, they won two seats, and I'm not here to downplay that. But looking at that map, ask yourself, if you applied the 2016 election results, it should have been 59-41. Well, what was it? 53-47. They had way more opportunities. They lost Montana. They lost West Virginia, two of the more conservative states in the country, West Virginia probably being the top three in terms of most conservative states, and a Democrat won there. Then you ask yourself about 2020. When we looked at this map in 2018, yes, it looked unfavorable. But the Democratic Party has been committed from day one to flipping the Senate. And we've been saying, I don't see how you make South Carolina competitive. Why are we now seeing a poll that shows Kansas being competitive? Because the Democratic Party fielded very strong candidates, and they have a lot more money than the Republicans do. Because a lot more is at stake this election for the Democrats than any other. Not even in 2008 could really compare in terms of what is on the plate for the Democratic Party. The economy, COVID-19, climate change, gun control the Supreme Court, women's rights, LGBT rights, everything and their mother is on the plate for the Democratic Party for this election, which is why we're seeing tens of millions of dollars in singular Senate races. 
And for the Democratic Party's sake, I think they're really hoping that this money is going to end up with them in the Senate majority. And it does look like they're on track to do so. Now, you can't count out the GOP. But this video was to show the point that the Republican Party went from being probably 90 to a 95 percent chance of retaining Senate control down to 31 percent in just over two years. Not over two years, less than two years. Because when you don't focus on your Senate races and when you put a lot of attention on the presidential race and then the presidential race, you know, Trump's campaign has spent almost a billion dollars on the campaign just to be down 11 percent nationwide. Just want to let that in, let that soak in. 11% nationwide, and he's bringing down Senate candidates with him. And guess what? For the first time now, the Democratic Party is the favorite to pick up seats in the United States House of Representatives. They picked up 41 seats in 2018. They're now expected to pick up even more. Not more than 41, but more seats than they have today. Exactly what we saw in 2008. This election, 22 days away, is getting a lot closer to being similar to what we saw with President Obama's first election. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord link for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 Senate election videos. Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please consider joining as a member on my channel and I will see you all tomorrow. Actually, later today.